and let us all that we can to build a better future. Lauren, you have a story for the people. Yes. What the is people. going on? Uh, that is the question. Uh, so Netflix, in their first quarter, uh, lost 200,000 subscribers. Um, it caused them, when they released the statement of how many they lost in their first quarter um, last week, their stock went down like 35%. Um, it's more than they've more subscribers than they've lost in over a decade. It's caused a lot of people to ask, you know, is this the end of Netflix? There's a lot of people online right now just wondering, is this the end? Or is Netflix finally overreached itself? Is it over? Um, so to start, uh, let's roll the clip. Um, it just this first clip. It has just a little bit of an overview mm -hmm. about the entire situation. With our good friend Varney, let's yes. see what he has to say. Let's start with Netflix. Let's get moving here. Uh, dragging down all the other streamers. Susan is here. What do you make of all this? So do you think we are at peak streaming? Because if you look at Roku, Disney, Warner Brothers, Discovery, all being dragged down today. Because so. the question is, are people willing to pay 15 bucks a month? For, at some point, there's got to be a cutoff in terms of how much content you're getting, how much time you're spending on the streamer, sure. and how much you're willing to pay each and every month. I think there'll be an awful lot of people checking out their TV bills yeah, right now. Exactly. Do I use this? Do I not use this? Yep. Can I afford it? Do I want it? And I think there's going to be some culling of streaming services. Well, I mean, Netflix is still the largest streamer on the planet. You have over 220 million global subscribers, losing subs for the first time in more than a decade. And that's despite the fact that they're spending 17 billion billion dollars a year on content so that Amazing. says that you know quality counts at some point and you can keep spending and throwing money at it but if people don't want to watch things that you're offering i think there's a rethink as well so as a result you right now have netflix on track for the worst day in a decade i counted at least nine analyst downgrades this morning all cutting down to 300 some including piper went sub 300 there Ooh. and the bar was ah. really set pretty low for the oh, first quarter of this year despite that yeah, Netflix losing 200,000 users, mouth. and they're oh, yeah. blaming Ukraine, Russia, which they say cost them 700,000 subs. So if it wasn't for Ukraine, Russia, they would have added 500,000, but that's still far short of the 2.5 million guidance. And also they're gunning for another loss of 2 million this quarter. It's been a long time since I saw a stock or a company of that size lose so much so quickly. Well, you saw in the first 30%. quarter of this year, too, because remember they, were, they had a dismal report card to end last year, a 20% drop in in January after that <laughs> low guidance for it's the strange. first quarter of this year. Funny how I forget these things. A, I did forget that. Well, I mean, look, at, well, if you're down 30% now, I mean, that kind of mirrors and clouds <laughs> your, your memory when you're like, wow, that's a, a stock down 30% in one single session. But mm. I'll tell you this, is that Reed Hastings, you know, he's been so reluctant to introduce a, an ad-based model. All of a sudden, after a 40% drop on the year, another 30% today, he's thinking of a, an ad-based subscription model now. I wonder if it'll work. I wonder, because also you have to think about the 100 million households they say out there that are sharing passwords. So if they say, hmm. well, now you have to all get your individual Netflix plans, yeah, that's one way to monetize, I guess. But you're going to lose subscribers. Yes, you are. That's for sure. So that okay. is a, just a pretty comprehensive um, overview of everything that uh, is kind of going on right now. So they lost those 200,000 subscribers during their first quarter. They're also projected to lose that 2 million. Now, some of that is because they've pulled out of Russia um, due to the Russia-Ukraine conflict. So they've pulled out of there. That's 700,000 people that are no longer um, counted as subscribers. So they kind of did that one to themselves. Um, and they're they're blaming a lot, as it's, she said in that video, they're blaming password sharing for a significant portion of the reason that they don't have as many uh, subscribers anymore. Okay. Um, but because they say like they say uh, there's like a hundred, um, like a hundred million people that have Netflix that are using Netflix and that are not paying for the service. Now, one of the ways that they want to get around that is to do what they've done in certain Latin American countries um, as sort of a trial run, which is to, if you're going to be sharing your password, your account, you have to pay a little bit more. Um, Netflix is already the most expensive streaming service out there. Wait, it's compared comparison to Netflix to, let's say, 
oh, I don't know, HBO Plus or Disney Plus? So Netflix, what's, what's the price range? right. So if you're looking at um, just the initial starting uh, entry uh, tier, Netflix is at ten dollars to start. Okay. Um, yeah, that's pretty high. Yes. So like Disney is at like six ninety nine to start. Okay. Um, HBO um, and Hulu, well, Hulu is also around you know seven dollars or so, eight dollars a month to start. My and God. then the, then you can add okay. you can add stuff to that. Right. Um, to so like you know if you have uh, Hulu without ads with HBO, um, you're already you're paying like thirty. Um, like you can, wow. it, it, like all of the streaming services are kind of expensive, but when you start, but again, most of them are bundles as well. So you're getting like four or five things mm -hmm. for that price. But when Netflix is starting at $10 a month for the cheapest tier that they offer, people aren't loving that, especially because they have some really bad habits of like canning content before people are ready for them to can it because, of how their models run. So like Netflix runs on a uh, on a completion mm -hmm. sort of model. They reward binging. So if it doesn't matter if you watch a show um, most of the way through, if you have to finish it in the first 28 days after it's released, or it's like d in danger. Like a lot of people have to watch it within the first month, the entire thing mm. before, or, or it might get canned. Like, that's just one of the ways that they try to figure out who's watching what, and they're just rewarding binging, which it just seems a little bit short-sighted to me. Mm -hmm. um, wow. Well, um, here's the thing, Netflix. Everyone's going to share their password. So I know that if someone has HBO or Disney Plus, and I have, let's say, Netflix, you know, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna, we're, we're gonna do is we do a little uh, video uh Co-op, you know, a, a little, a little co-op, worker co-op. You know, I'm going to steal some words from the great Roger Meadows. Be sure to follow him on Twitter. He does a lot of great work. But, yeah, you know, hey, sharing is caring. Let's face it, you know, folks, we are all, we're, we're all in this together. Uh, I know there's another video. Yeah, that, that so um, I've up. got a the uh, a bunch, like an interview from, right. the, like, the, the CEOs of Netflix, and they're discussing various aspects of this most this past quarter their reasoning and their thoughts and what they're planning on doing going forward. All right. Uh, um, there's, there's some timestamps too, yes. I think. So yeah. I think he's pretty much got it okay. up here. Um, so the first one is going to be Reed Hastings talking about like the general overview. And right. And, and, and before we do play the video in its entirety, in the show notes and the description box below, if you want to follow along, we do have the timestamps for there as well for our viewers, or if you want to check it out for a later time. Uh, be sure to check it out. Again, this is only for the live stream. When this gets clipped, Check, use the live stream as a reference so you can check out our show notes. So there we go. Okay, yes. Us ...through how your views have changed over the past few months. Yeah, Doug, I mean, I think our views are a little different because our numbers are a little different. Um, <clears throat> if we had uh, made our 2.5 million guidance, I think that was consistent with our thesis. And the lower acquisition really forced us to kind of tease apart what's going on. And as we uh, put in the letter, you know, COVID created a lot of noise and how to read the situation, you know, boosted us a lot in 2020. Um, and then in 2021, uh, I think we, you know, thoughtfully said it was mostly pull forward, uh, which was the logical conclusion. But now coming into 2022, that, you know, doesn't really hold. So then pushing into it, we realized, you know, with uh, all of the account sharing, which we've always had, that's not a new thing. Um, but when you add that up together, we're getting pretty high market penetration. And that combined with the competition is really, you know, what we think is driving uh, the lower acquisition and lower growth. So on the two parts, we're working on uh, how to monetize sharing. Um, you know, we've been uh, thinking about that for a couple of years. Um, but, you know, when we were growing fast, it wasn't the high priority to uh, work on. And now we're working super hard on it. And, you know, remember, these are over 100 million households <laughs> that already are choosing to view Netflix. They love the service. Uh, we just got to get paid, you know, at some degree for them. So that's part of it. And then two, it's really, you know, we got great competition. They've got some very good shows and films out. And what we got to do is take it up a notch. And uh, I'll tell you that we're all pretty, I know it's disappointing for investors. All right. Right. So like, that's the first part. Again, he's just re reiterating again, Netflix is very hard on the account sharing 
that's where they've decided to put their their eggs in that basket. It's the account sharing. It's the fact that y'all are sharing accounts. You're stealing money from Netflix. How can, dare you? Can I, can I, hold on. Let's, let's have democracy in the chat here real quick, okay? Let's have democracy in the chat. Folks, type one if you shared with your friends or your family members or with your loved ones, your significant other, any kind of Netflix or Hulu password. If, you, if you've done with any kind of streaming service, if you've done it. Type one if you have. Type two if you haven't. And also, let's say, hey, hey, type three, if you think Netflix is being out of pocket by going after password sharing. Type four, if you say, I agree with Netflix. The corporation is never wrong. So there you go. We'll have democracy very soon. So there we go. We'll see what the chat says. So there we go. I'm getting a whole bunch of ones already. So there we go. <laughs> Good job, chat. All right. So I think there's another uh, part of the video. Yeah. So this, uh, again, he's going to be continuing to talk about uh, their their loss and how much that like an just the absolute sheer numbers of how many people they've lost and a little and again i it's going to talk a little bit about russia as well i believe in this in this particular all right let's let's go check it out sure i'll take Maybe. that and then others can fill in so so as you said doug we 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 guided to two and a half million paid net ads we delivered 0 0.5 million if you exclude russia so there's really a two million miss in our q1 uh, actuals versus guidance. And what's really reflected there is acquisition growth was consistent with what we expected. We were. So yeah, again, he's talking about how like they expected based on their numbers through COVID and like uh, every, when everything was in the middle of everything, they expected to have 2.5 million more subscribers than they ended up getting. They barely even got half a million and then they lost oh, wow. people. So and they're, again, he's including the Russian numbers in there as well, but that's just one of the reasons that they are, um, they're, they're worried about it. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it took me a really long time. I had to watch the video like five times to figure out what he was talking about with the guidance and everything because I'm not a business major. Shocking. Um, but he, you know, they projected that they were going to continue to grow and they kept not growing. Um, so... We can actually probably move down to where they're going to talk about they're going to they're consider, con, considering um, adding an ad tier. So we can actually go down to that Ooh. video instead of because it's just going to talk about account sharing again was the other one I had. But um, so one of the things that they're trying to do to mitigate uh, damage is to create an ad an ad tier for customers who want to pay a little bit less. All right, can I, can I speak on behalf of everyone? Ooh, <laughs> sorry. Anyways, let's let's play that. Let's play the video. In a few small markets to start out, and then and then kind of move along. You know, we're probably not that advanced, but no, I think you know it's pretty clear. Um, you know that it's working for Hulu. Um, Disney's doing it. HBO did it. I don't think we have a lot of doubt that it works. Um, you know that all those companies have figured it out. I'm sure we'll just get in and figure it out as opposed to test it, you know, and maybe do it or not do it. So, uh, you know, I think we'll really get in. But again, it's uh, it's a would be a plan layer uh, like it is at Hulu. Um, so if you still want the ad free option, um, you'll be able to have that as a consumer. And if you'd rather, you know, pay a lower price and you're ad tolerant, that's also we're going to cater to you also. All right. So he's also goes on at some point to say that, like, they're going to try and continue just to be a publisher. So the ad, like they're not going to be doing ad matching, at least not in the corporate offices of Netflix. Um, they're going to leave that to other people to do that for you. Um, not saying that it won't happen because it will. Our phones listen to us. Um, but like, so they're really just trying to put the blame on everything except for themselves. And for me, I'm like, the, when people talk about what they're annoyed with with Netflix, it's it's sometimes it's the how much it costs to have a Netflix account. But again, most people just, they cross share. They like, I'll pay for Netflix, you pay for Hulu, you know? But like the thing that pe annoys people is that the quality of the content has just dramatically decreased. And then you've got the time, like everything's like reality TV shows now. And I was like, but that's not why we wanted Netflix in the first place. Yeah, we didn't I get hate, it. I hate that reality TV show. That's my own personal bias. I'm sorry, folks. So. Uh, no, it's it's totally fair. But that's like, and that's the reason that we, you know, we didn't get Netflix to watch TLC. That wasn't, mm. it, they, they were supposed to be offering something different. Um, and then, of course, they have their 
just tendencies to just act shows that people like for very little reason. Um, and some of it, it they're just solely thinking about what goes into their pocket and they're not thinking about what their audience is looking for. Um, the Babysitter Show Club, for instance, was apparently doing very well. Like they had the numbers, they had an audience for it and they got canceled after season two and they didn't tell the creators why they got canceled. Like they didn't know. And the assumption essentially is that it costs more for Netflix to produce something that they are not using their own studios for. So they are more likely to act shows that are not filmed in-house, essentially. Um, but then then you just lo are losing audience members because you're canceling shows that mean a lot to people. And it's like, it's, that has nothing to do with password sharing. That has something to do with, you know, what you're producing. And if you're not producing what people want. Agreed. So, I mean, it, it, what, what, what I, again, I'm kind of speechless on how you have this corporation that a lot of people have used. And I'm seeing people here in the live stream chat who are saying the ads on Hulu are annoying. People are also saying uh, Crunchyroll is now doing away of its free ad service. Um, you know, I, I find this to be really insulting towards people that went to Netflix, enjoyed the content, especially during the lockdowns. Let's face it, during COVID. In fact, hey, let's let's have democracy in the chat one more time right here. Let's go ahead and add in the comment section below. Type in there. But uh, during the unfortunate lockdowns in 2020, Type five if you were using one of the streaming service. It wasn't. It didn't have to be Netflix. Type five if you used that just to kill some time. Type six if you were just reading a book, maybe looking outside the window. I don't know if you were doing that. Go ahead. There you go. But type five if you're using a stream. I, I know I was. So there you go. Well, like the other thing too is that now that all the, the numbers came out, everybody and their mother has an opinion. Elon Musk weighed in. He thinks Netflix is failing because of the woke mind virus. Ah. Ruining content. Yeah. Okay. Well. Which I just find, I don't know what that is. Um, also, I find it laughable mm. uh, to, to say that Netflix is the progressive <laughs> site. Um, I, I think no, there's no such thing as a progressive. Like it, none of them are. He's like the content is is all has to be woke these days, so that's why no one's watching. It's like, but 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 um, Netflix doesn't really tell. Any, like I remember when the last season of Queer Eye dropped, they told nobody. Like it it didn't show up. Any you had to actively be searching for it. Mm -hmm. Like there's so many things. Like and then they cancel a lot of their quote unquote you know. Uh, the diverse shows, you know, Sense8 goes away, Glow, um, you know, Tuca and Birdie, all of these things that people really liked that had either uh, queer people as the main characters or people of color or anyone, like, like so many of those shows just, they get canceled really quickly and quietly. Um, and they aren't told that, no one's told that they're even happening to begin with. And then of course, coupled with their 28 day um, you have to watch the whole thing in that amount of time. Oh, oh yeah, I like, forgot they do that. Yes, yeah, so, right. so like it just I don't under like they're saying, and then you've got other shows, other streaming services who are providing a little bit more diverse content. Um, things like um, Our Flag Means Death on HBO Max or Euphoria, things like that, and people are eating that up. Mm. So that kind of uh, it seems to be saying the opposite of what Elon is trying to make out. It's like people are actually looking for that content. They do want to see woke okay. content. All right. all right. I see, I see where. All Question. right. Well, he, he, let's face it. Elon's <laughs> going to be posting all his, you know, I mean, tweets, you know, he's he owns Twitter now. He he can go home, you know. It's where his house yeah, is now. Do whatever he wants. Say what he wants to in his <laughs> I'm, I'm also seeing the chat here too. Golden Sign says, "Kit, uh the EU is asking everyone to work 3 days." Uh, out of the week from home. Oh, wow. Well, that, that, doesn't, that doesn't sound too bad. So there you go. I mean, I don't know. I mean, whatever. I, I think there's one more aspect we do have to bring up here. So let's go ahead and bring that up. Yeah, so just up. going back into what people are looking for. So we've got these fun people who actually are talking about a very similar topic. All right, let's play. Uh oh I cannot hear. 
needed to compete. And they have advantages like they have brands, they have uh, sitcom libraries, they have ad sales. So we look at the model, and this is the first time I could ever say is, you know, our confidence in the forward model is so low. Um, you, know, you have to, you know, ad advertising, you have to shut down password sharing. The US business is mature, Europe looks mature, the future growth comes from places like India. So yeah, we would say, look, we've seen this before. Um, you're in growth purgatory. You go from growth to value instantly. It's not cheap enough for value investors yet. Cash flow is ultimately the floor. This thing, you know, we, we think it keep falling. And uh, until you see the turn in revenue growth, which is probably 12 to 24 months away, you know, this is dead money in my view. Netflix not exactly the mm. what I wanted. That's okay. Um, so again, so people are like, that's just talking about people are worried about it because mm -hmm. they are not producing uh, what it was that people are actively looking for. Um, it's, and then of course they're just blame shifting. Mm -hmm. Everything's blame shifting. Well, you know, when, when, when you have people who are going to be blame shifting uh, consumers, Consumers have a right to also say, I'm, I'm done with you. Yeah. For many reasons. And if it's too expensive, too, people are thinking, ah, oh, do I spend $10 on this, $10.99 on this, or should I spend it on something far more interesting? Mm -hmm. There you go. So that, that, that's another thing. I think there was another video. Yes. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and pull that up. Crown. You, you can go through all of the titles over the last seven or eight years that have done that. If you look back over the past year, it just feels like, it, relative to the spend, $17 billion of spend, it just doesn't feel like the hit ratio has been high enough. And especially not just on the TV series, on the movie side, they're clearly not getting the return on the movie spent. Probably five plus billion of that 17 is on movies. It just isn't getting it done. And so they made a lot of excuses. I think the content success and the content hit ratio, it's not spending too much. It's honestly, the, the titles are not landing with the level of the success they need to given the rising level of competition that Sarah correctly spoke about earlier. Yeah, I haven't owned it since. Um... So, yeah, again, he, he's saying the content has to be there. You mm -hmm. can't. Yeah, well, the thing is, uh, again, content. I'm, I'm going to say a quote that Daniel and I said early on when we were starting Hard Lens Media. Content is key. Content is key. Content is key, especially when you start in this business whether it's radio, television, YouTube, and look, already Hard Lens and Chicago Corner are going to be on television too with our own special programming. And then we're on World Perspectives Radio Chicago. Mm -hmm. You know, content is key. Laney is putting different content on World Perspectives Radio Chicago. Uh, you know, we're doing content here for Hard Lens and Chicago Corner for, for YouTube. And of course, Hard Lens is going to be on Rockfin, Odyssey, and Rumble. Content is key. If the consumers like the content, they're going to want that content. And if you deny the content or if the platform says you're Thanos, you're goodbye, mm -hmm. uh, the consumer will say, well, then goodbye to you too. Yeah. And simple as that. So uh, what other final notes should we add into this story? I just, you know, if people are wondering if, if Netflix is going to go the, is go, is going to go the way of CNN plus, you mm -hmm. know, I don't think that it is. I think that it will be able to stick around at least for a little while longer. It, as, as we've said, it has over 200 million subscribers still like 222 million subscribers worldwide right now. Like even with a diminishing, um, with a diminishing return and diminishing subs, I, I think if they listen to the people, mm -hmm. you know, and they pay a little bit more attention to what people are asking them to bring to the table, like, don't cancel this show, please. You know, I, I think with a few tweaks, um, they could, again, see growth. Uh, for now, I don't think that they're in any actual danger of falling apart. I think okay. that they've got a couple of years left in them if they keep going the way they're going. And then with a few tweaks, they can actually change. But that does mean that they have to start listening to their consumers instead of just assuming that people are screwing them. Agreed. All right. Well, Lauren, uh, great segment, especially for our last Friday show as we're, again, uh, going to be changing things up here. So, Lauren, fantastic work, Thanks. as always.